I don't know about you guys, but I thought Dune Part 2, much like its predecessor, was a masterpiece. With how much I loved the film, I thought it would only make sense that I owned the Lego set that went along with it. So I went to lego.com, threw it in my cart, and $165 is a lot of money, but it's okay, I'm using the set for content. <laughs> it's totally <laughs> not an excuse to buy myself more Legos. <laughs> So, after checking out, all that was left was to patiently await for it to arrive in the mail. I get that the build is amazing and all, but I'm really here for the minifigs, man. I mean, look at these! I don't know about you guys, but I just don't see the hairpiece for this minifig. I don't think it matches Timothy Chalamet very well at all. This looks a little better, but it still needs to be a little bit longer on the sides. I'm honestly not sure what hairpiece would have worked best for him, so I don't really blame them using this one here. Another thing I wanted to quickly note is that there's this super cool, super cool, Atreides logo in the upper right corner, um, and it gives you some details for the build as you go along. Okay, is it just me, or do these pieces look extremely sus? Nice. As I'm sure you saw in the time-lapse footage, it took me a couple tries to get this whole Technic interior right. I'm gonna be straight up with you all, I am terrible with Technic, but uh, if we lift it up here, there's this function where you turn it and the whole thing kind of goes down into this loading ramp, which is actually pretty cool. Um, and then that is gonna tie into the landing gear as well. This is gonna be able to pull it up and down. So this thing is, Pretty cool so far. I'm really liking how this is turning out. All right, I'm starting bag three right now, and I just wanted to show you all Lego Jason Momoa. I've got to say, though, a big fig probably would have been a better idea. The mini fig doesn't capture how swole he is. <laughs> I am currently an hour and a half just about into the movie. And I've only gotten four bags done. Uh, which is really slow for me. This Technic interior here is just really slowing down my progress. But uh, we are going to hopefully be getting to the end of it pretty soon and start building the outside. So that should hopefully speed things up just a bit. Right, we're on bag six, which means it's time to open this and find out what's inside. So we got a cape and another cape. This thing is weird. Can't wait to use it when we build the Baron. Before I continue building the set, I just wanted to quickly note that this thing is so dense and heavy, it's almost like a weapon. I mean, you could use this thing as a club. You probably couldn't catch that on the time lapse, but this thing just completely shattered mid-air when I was building it. Uh, we're not going to talk about that. What I did want to talk about is how this bag is mostly bricks compared to probably, I don't know, 75 to 80% Technic that I was building before. So this one should hopefully fly through a lot faster. Fatality. Don't mind Dune playing in the background, but there 
is a problem. Okay, so you see how these are supposed to connect to that gray piece right there. We got these right here, and then that gray piece is completely stuck under there. So I don't know what went wrong there, but this is gonna be a complete pain. The Technic has been so difficult with this thing. Really not my forte. A few moments later. Thank the Lee Sun Al Gaib himself. This thing is finally fixed. Let's keep moving. Long have I waited. All right, so the movie just finished. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it so I don't get copyrighted. Um, and I've still got the rest of bag nine and then bag 10. So I'm very close to getting the set done. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it done while the movie was going. Uh, so that means I'm just gonna go ahead and restart it. Let's do this. Right, it is finally time to find out what's in this box. And uh, don't look at the instructions uh, back there. That's uh, definitely not what's in the box here. And yeah, look at that. I was right. Something different completely. Yeah, it's these uh, these wing blade pieces. These are a brand new piece, and these are really cool. Yeah. All right, and just like that, this absolute behemoth of a set is finally complete. Now, before I delve into the actual build of the ornithopter here, I want to first take a look at all of these incredible minifigs. Starting us off here, we have the three members of the Atreides family. We've got the Duke on the left here, Paul in the middle, and Jessica right here. Love the torso and leg printing for the Duke. I think the face and hair captures Oscar Isaac perfectly. <laughs> I already mentioned my issues with Paul in the middle here, and then I think Jessica over on the right is phenomenal. Love all that pearl gold. Here are the next two members of the Atreides house. We've got Gurney Halleck over on the left here, and then Duncan Idaho on the right. I think Gurney is easily one of the best figures in the set. That face print captures Josh Brolin so perfectly, and that armor piece is incredible. Duncan Idaho, while a little plain, is really, really good too. I love that new hair piece. Uh, and the torso and face print captured Jason Momoa pretty well. Hey, that's pretty good. All right, and moving on, we've got two members of the Froman population found on Arrakis. Uh, right here, we've got Johnny, and then over here, we've got Dr. Kynes. I love that both of these have the generic Froman torsos that you can swap out for someone like Paul over here. Johnny is really, really good. That face print captures Zendaya perfectly. Um, and then Dr. Kynes is pretty good as well. I love that new cape piece. All right, and I thought it would be kind of funny to have the Baron kind of chilling on his side here. Look at this dude. I mean, the amount of budget that must have gone into just this cloth piece here is insane. But I really, really do appreciate it. Getting the Baron in this set um, is something that I found to be really, really important. So I'm glad we got him um, because he is the main villain of part one and he is the main villain for a lot of part two as well. Overall, I think this is a really solid minifigure selection. I think the only thing I would have changed is uh, having Dr. Kynes here. I would have swapped her out for Stilgar just because he plays such a big role in the second movie and I really did not find her character to be all that compelling. But overall, I'm gonna give this minifig selection an eight out of 10. Also, here's how Paul and Chani look with their Froman attire together. This looks really, really good in my opinion. Okay, and because this thing is such a behemoth, I decided to move it back over to the studio where there is a lot better lighting over here too. So just taking a look at this thing, I mean, the footprint it leaves is absolutely insane. This thing is massive. Nice. Um, up at the front here, you do have this cockpit, which you can open up just by lifting it like that. Wow. Um, and then 
inside you can seat your minifigs. They've got some joysticks here and then a little control panel right there to steer the ship. And I moved the tripod back just a little bit so I could kind of capture the full length of these wings. But to go ahead and put them into flight mode, you're gonna take this piece right here and you're just gonna go ahead and push it forward oh like that. God. And a piece did pop off, but we're not gonna worry about that. And man, the wingspan on this thing is just actually insane. Like, I don't know how anyone can reasonably display this with the wingspan out like that. I mean, I don't know what shelf would fit it, but it is really, really cool to have. And you push down and the wings actually go ahead and flap, which is a really, really cool function as well. And then again, you can kind of pull them back. If you want to have this thing kind of soar down or just go ahead and land here. And speaking of the landing gear, there's this really nice ramp. Of course, it doesn't lead up into anything that really massive Technic interior, but you can go ahead and twist this up and it'll pull all of that landing gear in, lock it into place. Um, and then if you wanna go ahead and push those wings out one more time, there we go. This thing is ready for flight mode. This thing leaves an insane footprint. I mean, anyone who sees this is instantly gonna wanna go pick it up and start playing with it. And I think that's a really huge advantage to it is the play features um, and then just the displayability of it as well. I will say probably my biggest issue with this set overall had to be the build experience. I really did not have a great time building this. And that really is through the fault of the Technic interior. And it is a bit of a trade-off because you do get that really, really cool play feature um, that I showed you earlier. Which again, for me personally, I love. I have a blast every time I mess around with this thing. Um, so was it worth it? Yeah, I would say so. But just be cautious if you are interested in buying this thing that the build experience is a bit rough, um, especially if you're not a fan of Technic, which I am not. Um, but overall, I adore this set. I'm not even gonna try to put that piece back while I'm filming this. If you like Dune as much as I do, go out and get this set. You're gonna love it. I watched the first Dune movie while I was building it uh, here at home and I had a blast, as difficult as that Technic interior was. So I'm gonna give this set 9.5 out of 10. I mean, it's pretty, pretty damn near perfect. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. Uh, more Lego Dune content is going to be coming soon as well as more Ninjago content, just Lego content in general. So thank you so much for watching one more time and I'll see you around.